Hello. These cards have been sitting on my desk um, since I going since last Wednesday. I have been unable to finish them because I made a fatal error. And I have been just waiting to finish them, hoping it would work out. And uh, and then this morning I thought, you know what? Just just face it, you're gonna have to recreate them to, to finish them and fix that error. And um, since I'm recreating them, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll just go live and do it. And then I'll, I'll make an edited version for the people who want the shorter version. But okay, these are cards made using this stencil from Simus' Stamp. This is a stencil that I created for them. And then there's this stamp set that goes with it, right? So this is the Horizon Line stencil. And this is the On the Horizon stamp set. Sorry, it's open because I've been using it. Um, and they work brilliantly together, but I'm here to warn you, don't make the mistake that I did when I was creating these cards because I cannot finish them. Well, I guess I could, but they're, I can't finish them the way that I want to anymore. So I'm going to recreate these cards and do it right this time. And you guys are going to be along for the ride. Some of you may have guessed what that error is just by looking at these because a couple of the cards actually are finished. A couple of them are done. But these three, I have been unable to finish. Can you guess why? <laughs> and I feel like an idiot because this is something that I, I knew when I did it that I was like, ooh, this is going to be bad. I used a black pigment ink for these. And I, and I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just let it dry. I will let it dry. It has been six days and I still cannot get a clean embossed image on these. So that is my fatal mistake. I used a pigment ink when I should have used a dye ink and um, dye inks like they may stay wet for a little bit, but eventually they'll dry. These pigment inks, seriously. Okay, I will show you. I have been waiting to finish this card. Let's see, I, I did this one on uh, Friday. I've been waiting since then, right? I didn't apply a ton of ink, but I'm just going to show you where the problem is. Okay, I've got my antiseptic powder tool. I'm going to put a little powder down here. Let's see, how, how many days has it been since Friday? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It has been four days. This should be dry by now. And it is dry to the touch. I'm not getting any ink on me, right? Watch this. And I cannot believe this. Okay, I'm like, oh, look, I'm testing it with white embossing powder. The dang powder will not come off. And I think it's just the way the pigment ink sits on the paper, it doesn't want to let go, right? I'm getting all ticked off and angry just thinking about this. So we're going to recreate these cards today and um, we're going to do it right this time. We're going to make it work because sometimes the card ideas are so fun that you just have to do them again. So here we are. So these two cards, actually, I was able to finish. These two, I was able to finish because uh, there's no embossing on them. So I was able to, you know, finish them up. Now these cards, I could just, you know, do some greetings and on a separate piece of cardstock and finish them off. But I really wanted the one layer cards. And this one technically wasn't one layer because I made a mistake here too. I had to die cut a circle to put the sun on there. So we're going to address that with this redo of these five cards as well. Okay. So we're going to start off. We're going to start off with this card, which if you guys saw um, my, I have like a guest spot, a cameo on the Simus stamp live stream last Friday, which is why I couldn't go live. Um, I, I made this card over on their live stream. So we're going to start with this one, starting off with a already folded card base. And we're going to get inking here. All right, so here's that stencil. The fun thing about this stencil, and I've got links down below uh, if you want to check out the stencil and the stamps I'm using today. But the thing that's fun about the stencil is that you can, you can do the blending from both sides. And you're going to see me use that kind of today. So... All right, so the first thing, we're gonna work from the top down as we blend. So I'm gonna start with that first cloud line and I'm gonna put this in here. And you can kind of see the edge of that stencil line. I just wanna get this in here just about right there. 
and I've got some strips of masking paper that I've cut to some wide kind of strips. And I'm gonna be using basically one for each card. And I just wanna protect the area down below this spot so that I don't get blending past it. So I'm gonna start with a light blue color. This is Marine from Simon. I'm gonna put down my little paw print here and that'll hold my ink pad while I do my blending. Now I don't want a ton of this blue ink, so I'm gonna kinda of tap it on the masking paper and then come up and start blending that cloud line. Add a little more ink. There we go. And then I can peel up this tape. I'm gonna hold down my stencil right here so it keeps it in place and then peel this up. I'm gonna hold on to this, set it aside, and I'm going to move it to another cloud line. There's a second cloud line right above. So I'll slide this in and slide it down to about where I want it. About right there. And I'm gonna protect that area down below once again. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just put a little ink on my brush, tap it off so it's not too much ink, and then come in and start blending. And this is gonna give me a nice cloud line to work with. All right, peel up this tape again. And I'll move on to the area down below. I'm gonna save this tape like I said, I'm gonna use it for the whole card here. I'm gonna turn this around. I want this tree line right here, but I want to ink the, the interior of the tree. So I'm going to put my card base in like this. It can come in from the bottom. And then I can start to position and kind of see through the stencil and I'm gonna put my horizon line about right there. And I need to add my tape going around the tree, so I'm gonna tear this tape. And I'm just gonna use it in segments now. And I can block off that area right there. All right, my card looks like it could slide around in here a little bit. So I'm going to grab a little bit of Easy C tape. I'm not gonna be blending all the way down to the bottom, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape down here just to hold my card. All right, I'm gonna switch to a different color of ink. And I've got three colors of green ink I'm gonna be using today. If you notice on this finished card over here, Got a light green, a little bit of a darker green, and then a super dark green. So I'm gonna start with that lighter green, which is the color celery. And I'm just gonna be using the same green blender brush for this. I'm just gonna come down from the top there. And I'm really, I really want the color to be concentrated right at that horizon line because I do have two more layers of green that I'm going to blend down toward the bottom of the card. So I want to keep most of this color concentrated up here. All right, we have our tree. I'm going to peel up my tape once again, kind of holding the side of the stencil, holding it down. Some of these stencil, like the different horizon lines, are quite delicate, so you wanna just be careful when you're using the stencil. All right, so I can slide this off. We're gonna go down to the next horizon line, and I want some slopey lines, so I'm gonna turn my stencil around, and I think I'm gonna use this bottom one right here, but it, like in the example, it's blending down from that line so you can blend going up from that line if you want, or you can blend going down, and we want it going down. So I'm gonna slide my card back into the stencil, 
It's a little difficult with it taped down, but we're gonna make it work. Slide it back down, and then I can get it kind of positioned exactly where I want it. About right there looks good. And then I can tape over that lined area again, just to make sure that none of the, the horizon lines that I don't want start <laughs> coming into my project here. I'm moving on to the next color, which is Perfection. Just a little bit of a darker green. And I'm gonna blend this coming down. Okay. Peel up these bits of masking tape. I can take my stencil off and now I have those two lines. I'm gonna peel this up because now we're gonna be um, blending all the way to the bottom of the card. So I need to make sure that tape isn't there. And I'm gonna use uh, this horizon line right here. And in the example, I need to have a lot of space for where the people are gonna be stamped. So I wanna make sure that as I put my horizon line on here that I have it kind of angled so that it gets, gives lots of room right in this area right here for them to go. So right there looks about right. I'm going to add my tape just to protect that area above. Oh, I'm tearing my stuff at the same time, it's okay. And let's see, I, I kind of feel like that card's gonna move around on the other side, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that little bit of masking tape right there, and then it will prevent it from moving. All right, going to the last color, which is Field. More of that green blender brush. This is a darker green, so we're gonna get an intense green down here at the bottom. And I kind of want to blend all the way to the bottom of the card. So that we have a nice solid area. Okay. Then I can peel all of these up. I'm glad I'm done with this card because it looks like my masking tape has done its job and it's about to be calling it a calling it quits. <laughs> All right, and I've also got a little bit of ink on this finger, so I'm going to try to be careful as I remove this from the stencil. All right, so we have our basic scene here. And before I do anything else, I'm going to take my stencil over to my sink and I'm just going to run it under water. The uh, positively saturated inks from Simon, they clean off stencils really, really well because they react with water. So um, it's gonna clean off your stencil super easy. And this is also gonna give me an opportunity to kind of wash my fingertips a little bit because I wanna make sure I don't transfer any ink to the white areas on my card. So to finish off this card, we just have a little bit of stamping. And um, I'm going to do most of the stamping with a pigment ink, but I just have to warn you, this is why I'm redoing these cards because on some of the other cards, I should not have used a pigment ink. It made it too hard to emboss. So this one, we're just adding black on top. Not a problem. You can totally use a pigment ink for this. So my favorite pigment ink is this VersaFine Onyx Black. And we're gonna do a little stamping. I'm gonna use my Misty for the greeting, and then I'll move to an acrylic block. So the stamp set that goes along with the stencil is called On the Horizon. I'm gonna use this Adventure Awaits greeting. All right, so I've got my acrylic block here, and there's these people down here at the bottom. They have a little shadow it's perfect for this particular scene. So I'm gonna use an, a, little, a little acrylic block, still using that VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And the reason why I'm using uh, this method of stamping, you know, 
which is basically not using a misty is because when I, this is, I think my fourth time making this card. Um, when I went to make it, I realized that I couldn't get the people close enough when they were mounted on the misty altogether. And I, I just found that to be a little bit easier to use an acrylic block. Zoom in here for you. So I'm just coming in here and adding these people. See how they're kind of close? I mean, the stamp set's good because it's versatile. You don't have to have them that close or you can stamp them individually if you don't want all the people. But um, I really like the look of them kind of all together. All right. So the kites in the stamp set also don't have strings on them. And I did it that way because I wanted you to be able to use the kite um, wherever you want it. So I'm gonna put one right here. So with no strings on, you can move the kite around on your um, project and you can put it wherever you want. I am getting, and then I'll put the other one just right here. So the only thing you have to do is connect the kites with the people. I have a black pen here and I'm just going to kind of connect them. So there, here's what the uh, uh, card that I have finished looks like. You can see how they're connected. So I'm just gonna connect them over there. So you can do, you can use a pencil for this if you want, but I think I'll be able to just eyeball it. Just connect that line up there. And that one right there. So that finishes the very first card. We're gonna move on to another one. And this one is a sunset scene. You can probably already imagine how this comes together, but I'm gonna walk you through it anyway. I've got a, another card base here. I've got my stencil that I've already cleaned off. It's ready to go. And I'm going to start with the color Sunbeam from Simon's Stamp. And I'm just gonna blend from the top of the card. Get a little more ink right here. We're gonna call that done. So this card's gonna to come together really quickly because we're basically just using the, like the really gentle slopes that are down here. And we're gonna blend from the bottom. So I'm gonna put this in, put my card inside the stencil I'm gonna bring it down around halfway down the card. About like that. I'm gonna quickly turn this over and I'm gonna tape the back so the card doesn't move within the stencil. So I'll just tape that right there. Turn it back over. And then I need another bit of tape here just to protect the area right above. You can kind of see through the stencil. I've noticed when I use it, if I don't protect that up there, when I blend over it, you'll get a tiny bit of ink going right through the gaps. So I'm gonna just put it right there. And the color I'm using next is Sherbet. <music> Before it's gone One last summer before it's fall Tune your strings and play your cards Little words hit me like a game of darts And you're beating going to do all of the stamping and for this one I will be using my Misty for all of it. I'll hold that in place. We're going to use the really long like ground stamp here at the bottom and I'm going to put that right here. 
You can kind of see where I did it before, right? <laughs> Put that on the doorway misty. Now I'm not gonna be uh, doing heat embossing on this card, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that black pigment ink again. But just take note, only use the Versafine Onyx black ink if you're not going to be adding white embossing on top. That was my fatal mistake when I made these cards before. But I did really love how black it was, so. Yeah, okay, I've got one little spot here. It looks like it's, oh, yeah, it looks like maybe a cat fur or something. Not a huge issue. I will show you how you can fix that. Normally what I would do to like fix a little spot like this, I would just use my finger and go into it. In fact, maybe I still will, because it's so easy to fix that way. You just put a little, and it just gets lost among all the other black. It's not a huge deal. And then I'll just use my stamp chamois to clean off my finger. Transfer that to the drawer of my Misty using Versafine. There we go. I'm gonna take the sun and put it right there. And I'm gonna use that same yellow ink that I used for the blending before. a little bit heavy ink right there but that should dry back so that is the second card all right let's go on to the third card and these last three cards are where my flaw in my process uh, became apparent and basically I used the wrong type of ink for the black areas because I was going to be uh, heat embossing on top I used a pigment ink and six days later I still can emboss on top of it because the pigment, it just grabs onto that powder and it won't let go. And so I can't get a clean emboss. Before I move on to my final three cards, I've got to clean my stencil. Once again, I used the positively saturated inks from Simon. And when you run these underwater, it comes right off the stencil. I'm gonna grab another card base. This one is another A2 card. This time we're making this card, but finishing it because I'm not going to be using the black pigment ink this time. Now I did end up die cutting this circle right here for this, for the sun, but I'm going to try um, doing the sun a little bit differently this time. I think it might work a little bit better. Yeah. I'm going to have it go kind of behind a cloud if that makes sense. All right. We're going to start with the clouds, but I'm going to cut up oh, for one thing. The card is like this. <laughs> I'm going to slide it in. And I want the cloud about right like that. I'm gonna take some more um, masking paper that I've cut down to a wide strip and I'm going to protect the areas below, just like that. And I'm also going to turn this over and like I did previously, I'm going to tape the stencil to my card just so I have a little more stability and that stencil is not gonna move around. And then I'm gonna grab my Misty and I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna stamp the sun in that spot. And I'm hoping that this works out. <laughs> I have not done this, this will be an experiment, but I kinda want the sun right here so I'm gonna stamp it the best that I can and then um, go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna take the Sunbeam ink. If I need to, I can always blend down from that area as well. Get that pressed down as much as I can. Oh, looks beautiful. All right, and then I'm going to take, in fact, I think, I think Jennifer McGuire did this in her video last week. I'm gonna take that same Sunbeam ink and I'm gonna take my yellow blender brush and I'm just gonna blend around it. Get a little bit of that yellow kind of peeking out. 
And then I'm gonna go on and blend the blue. And I'm gonna use that same marine ink. And just very lightly with the blue, I'm gonna add that line. And hopefully with the combination of the yellow and the blue, we'll get a complete line of clouds. Oh, I love that. That turned out really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to this line of clouds. I love this idea for like a cloudy sky. I think it looks really, really nice. Oh, that looks really pretty, I love that. So I'm gonna do the ocean line. So I'm just gonna use these lines that are down here at the bottom, but I want to blend um, going down from the line. So I'm gonna put my card in the other way this time. For the truth, one last fight before I lose. I ask myself, where should I? And we can take the card out of the stencil, and there we go. So I'll just put that in right there. And this time, when I stamp the ground, I'm not going to use pigment ink. I'm going to be using a dye ink that should dry much quicker than the pigment ink that I used before, which was my flaw, if you remember that. That was what was bad. So I'm gonna be using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Okay, so I'm gonna set this card aside to dry. And unlike the last time I made these cards, when I set them aside to dry and I'd use pigment ink, this time they actually will dry. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm very certain they will. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside. We'll come back to it to add the greeting on at the very end. I'm gonna take the first tree, and I'm gonna stamp it right there in that same intense black ink. And then to finish off this scene, I'm going to add some birds. There's a, quite a few birds in the stamp set. There's like three together and then three that are separate. I'm going to use the ones that are a group. Lovely. All right, so this card is done until I add a greeting. So we're going to set it aside. So the final card is a little different in that it uses 
uh, not white ink or white paper. I'm gonna be using Cosmic Sky cardstock from Spellbinders. I just wanted a nice dark kind of navyish blue shade. I am going to have to use a little bit of pigment ink because I'm going to use white pigment ink to make some clouds. Okay, so now we have the cityscape. Everything down below is black and the stuff above is blue. Um, before I move on to the finishing of the rest of the cards, I'm gonna clean the stencil just cause I wanna get that dye ink off of it um, while the ink is still fairly wet. Yeah. Okay, so I've got some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and sprinkle that on. Not coming off. If I tap it with my finger, still not coming off. So now, this is when I take my brush, wherever it's hiding, there we go. Now I can brush off that embossing powder and it's no problem at all. This is why you wanna test it because if I tried to stamp that first, so bad, it would've been really bad, which is why I was never able to finish those cards before. So I'm gonna take my heat tool, I'm just gonna put it on the low setting and I'm gonna to try to uh, dry this area the best that I can. Let's test the powder again and see how it does. Already it's sliding off better than it was before. And when I tap it, it slides off perfectly. So now I know it's ready for stamping. All right, do my powder tool, I always forget. Do the powder tool after you have the stamp on there. <laughs> using my Versamark ink. Gently kiss that down. You can already see where it's at. It's gonna be great. And then just apply the embossing powder. Tap, tap, tap. We are all good. Okay. So there is that finished card, finally. A little bit of Versamark ink. Looks like there's a little tiny spot that's got a little bit of powder. So I'm just gonna use a dry brush just to brush that away. All right, so there's that card done. It's getting there's that. I only want embossing powder on the spot where I need it. Let's put that right there. I'm just trying to not get any embossing powder on that white area with the clouds. Put 
So then I can just tap and most get most all of it off. There are some areas that are sticking. Not a huge deal because super easy to kind of brush around the stars and get things moving. All right, so there's that, <clears throat> excuse me, that final card. So here are all five cards, all finished. Um, this was uh, a few, like a long time in the making because a lot of these cards, um, this was my second time doing all of the blending and making them because I made the mistake of using pigment ink when I was going to be doing a white embossing powder on top and that just did not work. It's not gonna work when you've got that much pigment ink on your design to put white embossing on top. So when I redid these, instead of using the pigment ink, I used a dye ink instead and that made all the difference. It made it completely doable. So learn from my mistake. <laughs> if your design calls for doing some white embossing or any color embossing on top of black ink that you've applied to your paper, just save yourself the trouble and just use a dye ink from the start. Don't use the pigment ink. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you guys in another video, hopefully soon. My videos have been kind of sporadic and all over the place lately, but I'm hoping to get back in the groove of things and um, I hope you'll still be around to watch that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video very soon.